diagnosis of the folic acid deficiency. Diagnosis established by megaloblastic peripheral smear, low serum folic acid level less than 3 nanogram. Normally, it is 5 to 20 nanogram per ml. And positive FIGLU test, there is an excretion of formino-glutamic acid in urine after loading dose with histamine. And the management of folic acid deficiency involve oral and parental folic acid therapy. There is one to five milligram per day for three to four weeks, along with concomitant vitamin B12 supplementation. Miscellaneous cause of megaloblastic anemia. A congenital disorders of DNA synthesis, there is orotic aciduria, thiamine responsive megaloblastic anemia, congenital dyserythropoietic anemia, and the Lex Nihan syndrome, it lead to megaloblastic anemia. A five defect in DNA synthesis in leukemia, liver disorders, particularly acute myeloblastic anemia, cytoblastic anemia, and aplastic anemia, it result into megaloblastic anemia. And drug-induced megaloblastosis in purine analog, mercaptorine, azathioprine, and thiobunine, it result into megaloblastic anemia. There's a pyrimidine analog that is 5-fluorouracil or 6-azaguridine, inhibitors of ribonucleic pneumonucleotides reductase, there's a cytosine arabinocyte, there's a 5-hydroxyurea, it results into megaloblastic anemia. And the folate antagonist, there is anaptorin, methotrexate, pyrimethamide, trimethoprim, and triamterin also result in folic acid deficiency and megaloblastic anemia. Treatment of megaloblastic anemia. Cobalamin deficiency treatment. To treat the case of megaloblastic anemia, all efforts should be made to detect underlying cause of megaloblastic anemia. The duration of the treatment is not as standardized as in case of iron deficiency anemia. Duration depends upon the underlying etiology of megaloblastic anemia. The lifelong therapy of megaloblastic anemia may be needed in children with inborn error of metabolism, that is aortic aciduria. Children with neurological manifestation, it needs more aggressive therapy and may need B12 supplementation for a longer duration. The root of administration has to be parental in children with malabsorption and increasing factor deficiency. The drug-related cause, mycoblast, myelodysplastic syndrome, and others should be extruded during therapy. Mycoblastic anemia with the established cobalamin deficiency should give intramuscular or intravenous administration of cobalamin 1,000 microgram daily for two weeks and alternatively thrice weekly for two weeks, that is a six dose, then give another six dose until hematocrit return to normal. Intravenous roots should be preferred over intramuscular in children presenting with thrombocytopenia to prevent local bleeding. Other regimen for vitamin B12, that is 1000 microgram per day for eight weeks. And initially, B12 is given daily for two weeks, followed by once a week for six weeks. Recently, a lot of stress has been given on an oral administration of cobalamin due ease of administration, leading to better compliance of the therapy. The recent study shows that the response to the oral methylcobalamin therapy is prompt and adequate. It is administered at 
1000 to 2000 microgram but a wide range of dose and schedule have been recommended the recent development in a conjunction with nano medicine for co administration of drug with lipid compound have been reported to enhance lymphatic support this technology have been recently used to administer vitamin b12 sublingually and intranasally and this method have been found promising route of administration folate therapy pharmacological dose of folate it is 1 to 5 mg daily is required to achieve full hematological response it is however not worthy that administration of folate to individual with a cobalamin deficiency and the risk and the frequency of cobalamin deficiency induce neurological and neuropsychiatric condition therefore folate should not be instituted in the patient with megaloblastic anemia unless cobalamin deficiency has been ruled out and hypokalemia can occur during treatment of severe megaloblastic anemia because of ongoing rapid restoration of erythropoiesis in bone marrow so main this in case of folate therapy there is a hypokalemia treatment of severe megaloblastic anemia so monitor this serum potassium it is very important to closely monitor serum potassium which fall with the treatment and result in death so oral potassium supplement should be given in case of hypokalemia due to folate therapy iron deficiency can occur because of escalated erythropoiesis and this may impede the rate of response so iron therapy is equally necessary so during folate therapy in case of severe megaloblastic anemia it resulted to hypokalemia this hypokalemia so monitor serum potassium and also oral potassium supplement and also give iron therapy in case of megaloblastic anemia due to the folate acid deficiency so today's key message of this megaloblastic anemia so there is a vitamin b12 and folic acid deficiency are a leading cause of megaloblastic anemia the vitamin b12 deficiency may present with pancytopenia hemorrhagic manifestations and fever they mimicking the disease like aplastic anemia or acute leukemia homocysteine is increased in both folate and vitamin b12 deficiency but methyl malonic acid is increased in vitamin b12 deficiency only apart from anemic syndrome patient with vitamin b12 deficiency may also present with neurological symptoms and the treatment of folate deficiency with folic acid supplementation should be initiated after to rule out concomitant b12 deficiency as it increase the risk of neurological and neuropsychiatric disorders and hypokalemia and iron deficiency can occur during treatment of severe megaloblastic anemia 